Hi everyone, my name is Peter Faria and welcome back to another Day in the Wild episode hosted by Data Mini. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel below, click on the bell to turn on the notifications to be the first to know every time we upload a new video. Today we're going to be talking about how to create your first analytical application. So what we have right here is a workflow that contains information for each city in the United States. The information is their population. And then what we're doing is getting the top 10% for each state and then filtering by a specific state, in this case New York. So if we wanted to convert this into an analytical application where other people could come in and simply just run something more dynamic. We can just change this two different ways. Either clicking on the canvas and then going to workflow and then selecting the analytical app option. So converting from a regular workflow to an app. Or you can pretty much just drag it in any of the tools from the interface category into the canvas and then this will up, uh, update automatically. So for this, let's say that we want to create a workflow that in this case is not really updating the input. We're going to update the top n percent of what we look for as well as the filter. So the first step is to drag it in a numeric up and down. Then we can just drop it right here. If we connect directly into the tool, you can see that an action tool will pop up right here. The action tool is located right here. You can either do it this way or you can drag it in the action tool and then connect both ways. So the first step is to configure the actual interface tool. The interface is simply showing you what the user will be seeing. So we can just say select the top end. And then we can define the minimum, the maximum, the, the increments, as well as the default option. So we can say the default option is 10. Then if there's any decimal places for this, this case will be not. Then the actual tool is actually what we actually doing that's the actual tool that changes the actual tool that is attached to it so the action tool will be updating the sample tool right here so the way to configure this is find exactly what we need to update in this case it's going to be the number 10 so i'm just clicking on number 10 right here and then you can see that it already automatically shows me exactly what is being updated if I were to specify a specific digit or a specific portion of the whole thing that it can be updated, then I could just check this box right here and then update specifically what I want to update. But in this case, I'm updating everything. Then the second step is to actually configure something to be able to update the filter. So in this case, we can just drag down a text box, then connect text box directly to the filter. Then you can see that the action tool will update and appear. In this case, the way to set it up is to find exactly what we need to update. So in this case, it would be the value of New York. Then you can see by simply clicking on the option where New York shows up, it understands automatically that I need to update New York. Then we can just set up the interface again to say specify the state. So if we were working with either updating the input or the output, then we're going to be using either the file browse or the folder browse to actually be able to accomplish this. In this case, we want to just use the same input that we've been working with before, as well as not really output to a file, just show as a browse. But something to pay attention to is that whenever you drag it in a browse, the browse would not be the output that's going to be shown unless you select it to be. So the way that you need to actually configure an application, a macro, that you both use the same interface, is by going to view right here, then clicking on interface designer, or you can do control alt D. Then the interface designer, let me just drag it in right here, it shows you this. So you can see that this portion right here is this as well as the text box option it is right here 
So this is what the user will be seeing, right? So you have this option of, for example, uh, if I want to just delete this, I could just delete this. If I want to change tabs, so if I click on add tab, I could just move it to different tabs where the user has to go through all the tabs, for example. In this case, I'm just delete this. I can add notes, I can add labels, links. I can actually do different things and actually configure this in a more user-friendly approach for the user. If I want to move the order, so if I want to say that, okay, you need to specify this page before, I could just click on the little arrow above and then I can actually just change the order. In this case, let's leave select the top end first as well as leaving the specify state as a second option. But something to pay attention to, it is the configuration. So if I click on the configuration right here, you can see the third option with, which is on success, show results to the user. You can see that the browse, it is not automatically checked. So always be aware of that. If you did not check this, you would not be showing up whenever the user stops actually running the workflow. So gonna check this. If you want to actually create something more user-friendly and just more customizable, you can add pictures, right? So you can use the use graphic option. In this case, it gives you a ultra image, but if you wanna specify to your clients or maybe your company's uh, logo, you can just click the option right here and then use the specific uh, image that you want. In this case, you can just use the Altrix one. Then you can click on hide. Then the user can either run the workflow like a workflow or the user can run the workflow as an application. If the user opens the workflow as a workflow, then he should do something like this. To run as an application, whenever you actually open like this, you just click on this button right here. So by clicking on the button, you can see that this is the user-friendly interface that the user will be seeing. If he just double clicks on the file originally, he will only see this portion right here. He will not see the actual workflow in the background as you can see right now. So with this, I'm then able to, for example, say, I want to do the top end, which will be five. Then I can just say that I want to get, let's say, Florida as a state. So I'm going to get the five most popular cities in Florida. Click on finish. And then you can see right here that I'm able to see the top five most popular cities in Florida. So this is how you can create an analytic application inside of Altrix. I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a nice one. Bye bye. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please comment them below. Don't forget to subscribe to know when future videos are posted. Thank you for watching.